All right, so now that we've kind of gone over what the second derivative can be used for in graphing a function, we can also use it to kind of understand uh, maximas and minimas. Okay, so in the previous video, I kind of said, okay, this is local maximum, this is local minimum. I said we get into it more. So here, here we'll go over that, right? So uh, we basically say that a function f of x has a local minima or maxima or maximum minima and maxima are plural maximum minimum singular uh, at you know x star if x star is a critical point and you know for a minimum we have uh, f switches from decreasing to increasing, right? So if you're going from down, then at the critical point you have zero slope, and then you start increasing again, then that's a minimum, right? And a maximum, sorry, these are local minimas, local maximas, is when f of x switches from increasing to decreasing, right? So in this case, we were going up and then at a critical point, it's flat, and then we come back down. So that's a maximum, right? And we call them local because it's only in this small neighborhood that, that we're looking at, right? So we're not saying that this is the highest or the lowest value that our function ever attains. That would be like a global maximum or global minimum. We're saying that local locally in a small neighborhood around this point, um, it's, it's a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so let's, let's do an example. Okay, so let's do an example. We're gonna have f of x equals x e to the minus x, okay? We're gonna look for, you know, maximums and minimums of this, okay? So where are it's local max or mins, if it has any. Okay, so to do that, we need to find where it has a critical point. Recall that a critical point is when f prime, ooh, let's put this down here. Right, f prime of x is equal to zero, or f prime of x star doesn't exist, right? So when we have like a sharp corner or something, then that's potentially a critical point and you could still have a minimum or maxima, even though the uh, tangent slope there doesn't exist, right? So it's not that the slope is zero, it doesn't exist, but it could still, it could still very well be a maxima or minima, okay? And we can do an example where, where that happens, right? So let's do this one, right? F of x equals x e to the minus x. So we wanna look for where, so we wanna find critical points where f prime of x equals zero. So let's take its derivative. Well, we're gonna have to do the product rule. So let's say we have f of x equals g of x, h of x, right? Where g is the function x, h is the function e to the minus x, right? So the derivative of g is just one. The derivative of h of x, right, by the chain rule, that's e to the minus x is just e to the minus x, and then the minus one comes down, okay, minus e to the minus x, okay? So then we put those together using the product rule, and we get f prime of x equals g prime h plus h prime g, and so we get one times e to the minus x minus e to the minus x times x. Okay, and then let's just combine this into one minus x e to the minus x. All right, and so where does this thing have zeros, right? Well, f prime of x is equal to zero means that either one minus x is zero or e to the minus x is zero, right? So we get two, two things, one minus x equals zero or e to the minus x equals zero, right? 
we try to solve this one, right? We get minus x equals ln of zero, which doesn't exist. Right? Can't take natural log of zero. Or another way to think about this is e to any power is never zero, right? It asymptotes out to zero, but never actually reaches zero. Whereas this side, that's easy. That's just x equals one. So x equals one is a critical point of our function. Okay. And so to make sense of whether or not it's a minima or a maxima, we need to check whether f is switching from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing at this point. Okay, so let's check the derivative nearby. All right, so f prime of x, which is one minus x e to the minus x, right? So we want to look what sign is f prime when x is bigger than one and x is less than one, right? To the left and to the right of this critical point. So when x is bigger than one, let's try x equals two, right? That gives us one minus two e to the minus two or negative one e to the minus two, which is negative, right? So e is always positive. e to some power is always positive. So this is negative. And then for x less than one, we'll say, let's try x equals zero, right? That gives us one minus zero, e to the minus zero, which gives us um, one times uh, one, right? e to the zero is just one, which is positive. Okay, so our sign table would look like this, right? We'd have f, f prime, right? At, and then we'll look at x as well. Right, so at our critical point, x equals one, this is our critical point. We found that the derivative was zero, which means that f had a critical point. Right, and we're trying to classify this as a local minimum or a maximum, right? And so we checked on the right, right? x bigger than one, we tried two, and we found it was negative. And because this is the only place where that derivative is zero, then if we tried one point over here, then all of the x values that are bigger than one have to be negative, right? Because in order for it to not be negative, it'd have to pass through zero, which only passes through zero here. Okay, so then if we're like decreasing x, okay, now we've gone through a critical point, the derivative has gone through zero, so we need to check the sign of it on the left, right? So for x less than one, right? It could either be negative or positive. So let's check, we tried x equals zero, right? which is a point to the left of our critical point, And we found that the derivative was positive. Okay, so we found it was positive on the left, which means that our function was increasing and then it switched to decreasing, right? So it went up, down. And so here it looks like the top of a hill, right? Up, flat, down. Okay, so that means that x star equals one is a local maximum of f of x, right? And then, you know, to finish this off, we'd have to find out what f of one equals, right? So that's e, that's x times e to the minus x. So it's e to the minus one, okay? So we'd say, you know, one e to the minus one is the local max, right? So it's technically, you know, a point so it has an x and a y value, right? So if you'd say like, what, uh, what is the maximum value of the function? Value of f of x equals x e to the minus x, right? What's the maximum value of that? And where does it attain that maximum? Right, so we're asking what's the maximum value that this function always takes? Well, we saw from the critical points that it was increasing up to this critical point and then it was decreasing from there. So because it never starts increasing again, then we know that this has to be kind of the maximum value that this function ever attains, right? Because it's always increasing on the left and decreasing on the right, so that has to be the highest value that it ever attains, okay? Because it's the only one. 
Okay, so the maximum value of the function is e to the minus one, and where it attains that maximum is at x equals one, right? At x equals one, right? So these questions, they always say, well, you know, what's the maximum value or where does it attain that maximum? So that's referring to the y or the x value. Okay, cool. So let's do another one, right? So let's do this example. We will do, what is it? Mm. Ah, here it is. All right, so now let's do the function absolute value of x, right? And now we're going to only look at it on a certain domain, right? So we're going to look at it on uh, negative 2x to 3. Right, so we're not going to look at this function outside this interval, right? So now we have boundaries to our interval, okay? So f of x equals absolute value of x, you know, where are the maxima and minima? Okay, so to find local extrema, Extrema is another word for maximum slash minimums, just extreme values, right? They're either the maximum or the minimum, right? We need to look for f prime of x equals zero or does not exist, right? So if you recall, f of x equals absolute value x can also be written as x or x positive and minus x for x negative, right? So the derivative is either positive one or negative one, depending on if you're on the left or the right, but it's undefined, or it does not exist at x equals zero, right? Because the function looks like this, right? So it has constant slope, oops, right? Absolute value looks like this, just nice straight lines coming out from zero. So at zero, there's kind of a corner here, right? You have positive one slope here, negative one slope there, and it doesn't like change smoothly or anything. So the derivative here doesn't exist, right? Because there's no way to match these two values since they're constant, okay? So it doesn't exist here. It's positive one on the left. So this is what it would look like. It would look like positive one or negative one, right? With holes, this would be the derivative. This is f, right? So it would look like negative one or one, right? And then at zero, it doesn't exist, okay? And there's no place where the derivative is actually equal to zero. So the only critical point would be at x equals zero because that's where the derivative is undefined. Right, it doesn't exist at zero. So that's gonna be our critical point. Okay, and so is it a max or a min? Well, let's check, right? F, F prime, X. For this one, it's pretty easy because the derivative is either positive or negative one. So at X equals zero, we said the derivative doesn't exist, right? For X bigger than zero, well, for this one, it's easy because it's just always positive one for x bigger than zero, so we know that that's positive. And for x less than zero, we know it's negative, right? So that means x negative means f prime is negative, which means f is decreasing, and then it's increasing to the right, which means that this is a local minimum, okay? So that would be our local minimum for this function, which we can kind of see from the graph, right? We can tell that x equals zero should be the minimum of that function, right? But what's the maximum, right? So maybe I should write that down. Oh, I did write it down, right? x equals zero is local minimum. So we'd say uh, f of x has a local min at zero, zero x value, y value. Okay, but where is its maximum?
Well, we saw that there are no local maximums, right? Because we didn't have any uh, points where the derivative was zero or didn't exist, where the, deriv uh, where the function switched from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing, right? Uh, but we still have endpoints, right? So we can actually check the value at the endpoints to see where it's incre uh, where the maximum would be, right? So we check the endpoints instead, right? And so when we're looking for a maximum, in this sense, we're looking for a global. So we're look where where is its maximum value? slash global max, right? So a local max is just this, this derivative check, whereas a global max is, you know, the maximum value that this attains over the whole interval that we're considering, right? So there's no local max, so we check the endpoints instead. Well, the endpoints were negative two and three, so let's check those, right? F of negative two is absolute value minus two, which is two, and F of three, right? So we had negative two, x to 3 was our interval. So absolute value of 3 is 3. Okay? So because uh, our function was decreasing from the left and then increasing up towards the right interval, then we know that the maximum has to be at one of those endpoints, right? Because you're either decreasing away from a maximum or you're increasing towards the function maximum, right? So we just check which one of these is bigger. And so we'd say, okay, that's where it is, right? So f of x has a global max at 3, 3. All right? Okay. And so in the next video, I'll show how we can also use the second derivative to check whether something's a max or a min.